biomarkers certainly play a role in prognostication of HEPPEF. In fact, I think it plays a most important role in prognostication. Um, of course, the most commonly used biomarker there would be NT pro BNP or BNP, the natriuretic peptides. Now, very importantly, a lot of people know that NT pro BNP is prognostic in heart failure reduced ejection fraction, but our recent work uh, published this year in European Heart Journal has shown that for the same level of NT pro BNP, it is just as prognostic in HEF-PEF as in HEF-REF even though normally HEF-PEF patients have a lower level. But if it's at the same level as HEF-REF, it's associated with the worst prognosis. So extremely important. Of course, there are other biomarkers that are also looking very, very important prognostically in HEF-PEF. That includes, for example, the troponins. Uh, the diagnosis of HEF-PEF in patients with atrial fibrillation is really something I've been thinking a lot about recently. Um, we actually published saying that HEF-PEF and atrial fibrillation may be vicious twins. And, and that's because, first of all, their pathophysiology is very intertwined. They occur very commonly together in older people. And their symptoms can actually be similar. So both AF and HEF-PEF separately can cause breathlessness and effort intolerance and tachycardia and palpitations. Worse still, AF and HEF-PEF can both individually lead to enlarged left atrium or increased natriuretic peptides. So it's sometimes very, very difficult to distinguish um, whether a patient has HEF-PEF or atrial fibrillation or both. I think a lot of work needs to be done in this area still. Actually, heart failure is a condition where sexual dimorphism or differences between the sexes is really very pronounced. So, um, of course, one of the biggest areas that I'm interested in is heart failure with preserved ejection fraction or HEF-PEF. And that is predominantly a, a, a condition that impacts elderly women. In fact, in HEF-PEF, women outnumber men by about two is to one. So that's one condition. But if we look at the entire spectrum of a woman's life span compared to a man. There's also peripartum cardiomyopathy that a man cannot get. There's also stress cardiomyopathy or takatsubo that is really um, something that really impacts elderly or postmenopausal women much more than men. So yes, there are a lot of sex differences and we really need to pay attention to recruiting women into heart failure trials and really trying to understand if these differences mean that we need you know, more sex specific treatments. We're not there yet. <laughs>